I've done is I've arranged a bunch of different sheets of drawing paper on these two walls. Um, and I, I understand that a lot of you don't have ideal um, studio space or perhaps not even like wall space like this. And that's totally cool. If you're, if you're gonna end up like having to work at a table and you know work on the drawings <clears throat> just kind of like single-handedly and then move on to the next one, that's fine. But I'm just, I'm just trying to get you to see like, just this is just a, an example, okay? You don't have to do this this way or anything or they don't have to be these sizes. I'm just trying to show you an example of what the whole project's about. About that idea of interpretation in terms of whatever theme or subject matter or you know whatever narrative possibilities you're going to try to investigate um, can be obviously interpreted in terms of scale. So remember, this whole project is about that either the scale of the drawings thematically are in concert with each other, or so I have decided that my subject matter <clears throat> or my theme that I'm going to investigate is going to be not only this owl but just owls in general, okay? And that's just, just for the sheer purpose of just an example. So obviously you're not picking <laughs> this as your subject matter. I'm just gonna show you how I start to interpret this as the subject matter relative to the project in investigating <clears throat> this owl and other owls in terms of drawing, at multiple scales and having them either in concert with each other or in contrast. So <clears throat> the medium I've decided to use is charcoal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start basically drawing on these pieces with fine charcoal first. That's just a choice. Again, these are just decisions that I'm making for myself. Um, and so I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna try to do for myself, because when I try to do like a series like this, I try to work on all of them collectively and then start kind of pushing and pulling and making choices about editing them independently and then trying to think about how they're all working either cohesively or if they're not working cohesively and stuff like that. So you can see what I've done is, I, all I'm, again, I'm just trying to show you what, a, the different possibilities are about how you start kind of infiltrating each size piece, you know, at whatever scale you're going to be working in. And so I'm just trying to show you how I'm, you know, I've picked this subject matter, owls, right? And now I'm trying to do <clears throat> a series of drawings that are based on the subject matter. I've been using charcoal and I've just, I'm just trying to get a sense of for myself I, I laid them out in, in this orientation on the wall. And again, I understand that a lot of you aren't gonna have um, you know, space to be able to do this, but just, I just want you to see visually what, you can, what, what the possibilities are in terms of <clears throat> what happens with the orientation, how each one of these is composed on the page. Um, and so this is what I was talking about with each one of you, about this idea of, you know, you're doing, you have one subject matter and you're doing multiple ways of interpretation regarding that subject matter. Um, and there's gonna be as many change-ups throughout the process of creating the, the series as you want. It's gonna to be totally up to you. So just for myself, it just occurred to me that I'm noticing one kind of common thing that's really kind of 
coming out in terms of um, the imagery and what I kind of want to um, amplify in the drawings. Um, and that's the, that's the um, owl's eyes. So I'm coming back in here with my darkest um, black pastel. And I'm just going to really start amplifying <clears throat> the black I'm seeing in their eyes. Um, now I have no idea, and you know, in the process of making these drawings, I might go back and change something with respect to the eyes, or I might end up like really lightening up the other part, the other parts of the owl's anatomy. But for some reason, I just thought like, hmm, maybe I want to kind of just see what happens when I really start bringing out the eyes because they're going to start having like a lot of kind of visual symbolism in them um, in terms of the contrast. So that's why I am amplifying them right now. Just to get a sense of try to see like what starts happening when I when I really bring that contrast out relative to when I lay down the blind charcoal, I'm now really kind of I'm gonna just see what happens when I really darken these eyes. And I'll come back in and I'll <coughs> I'll take out the white, the whites of the eyes basically. But you can see even hopefully in the video that the contrast is becoming amplified. And so changing, what's happening is, is that I'm, I'm bringing in a cohesive element into the drawings. I mean, obviously they're cohesive because they're all dealing with the same subject matter. But now what's happening is, is that as a group of drawings, as a series, this seems to be like the one thing right now, in terms of where I'm at in the process right now of making them, that I'm putting a lot of emphasis on. And so that emphasis might really start um, kind of determining how the drawings are read or what people kind of take from them in terms of meaning or interpretation. Um, but again, I might end up completely changing my mind about this and lightening the eyes or you know doing something else to them i don't really know what's going to happen um, but i'm just when i was standing back and looking all, at all of them together i just thought like you know that because they're owls their eyes just they draw you in so much um, and they're kind and they're obviously very haunting So maybe it might end up that I just even like really lighten all the other parts of the body where all this all this structure of the rest of the owl just becomes basically completely understated and it's barely discernible and all you can see when I'm done are just the eyes. Um, but you'll still be able to tell that they're probably attached to an owl. Um, but I don't know, I don't, I don't know, that's the whole point, is that in the whole process of working on all of these together, you want to just keep playing around and experimenting and seeing what direction they pull you in because you don't want to have to think about like an end result, you just want to just keep working within the time frame of the project and just kind of see where you end up when the project finishes. So essentially, um, as I said, as you work on your series and you're thinking about the scale and the contrast of the scale of all your drawings to each other, um, just really think about what, what you want to try for yourself to convey thematically that you've chosen or the subject matter. Um, and just know that really think and experiment through the whole process of creating the series. So as an example of the, of for this, I've, I've only been working on this for about an hour and a half or two hours. And as I said, remember this whole project is equivalent to about 15 hours. Now, this is charcoal. Draws pretty, you can, you know, you can manipulate it pretty quickly. So this is gonna be a completely different experience 
in terms of you know how long something takes you like for instance as opposed to something in graphite depending on how you manipulate the graphite or watercolor or gouache or or, or whatever you're going to choose to do just all i'm trying to show you is an example of the possibilities um, in terms of composition and placement and um, what you want to emphasize how things will change how you how you're subtractive, how you're additive, all those things are gonna end up kind of making the whole series cohesive. And, and, and over, the overriding theme of everything is about how you're approaching it in terms of scale. You're really trying to think about the difference in scale. So what I'm gonna do next is show you, I'm gonna do a time-lapse video and show you how, because in the end, when you finish with your series, depending on how many drawings you end up with, I want you to really think about how they would be oriented on the wall. So I'm just gonna, in the time-lapse video, I'm gonna show you what the possibilities are in terms of thinking about orientation, okay? Now, where, wherever the video ends up is not, is not me saying like, this is my final decision about how, I want, how to, I want to orient it. I just want you to see how many variables there are in terms of orientation. 